Possibly. Okay. Now, every week or so, some manufacturer somewhere in the world announces that they're going to stop making a particular type of engine. And to be honest, most times, well, we don't really care. But the other week, we heard about the death of something really rather special. So, get your Kleenex ready, because coming up now is an obituary. A moment's silence, please, for the passing of the Queen Mother of motoring, the Rover V8 engine. Now, I know we don't normally do engines, but stick with it, because this is an icon. It started out as an unloved orphan, but in its 37-year life, it has been in quite a few different cars. It first appeared in the Rover P5, then the Rover P6, and the Range Rover, and the Land Rover, the MGB GT, the MGR V8, the Morgan Plus 8, the Discovery, the Triumph TR8, loads and loads of TVRs, the S, the Chimera, the Griffith, then the Marcos, and the Ginetta, the Brabham single-seater racer, the Westfield SE8, and the Sherpa van. Basically, it has run Britain. Amazing, but for us, the best home that engine ever found was in this, the Rover SD1. The SD1 and this engine are one of the great partnerships of all time. Think of Lennon and McCartney, Morecambe and Wise, Tango and Cash. And the marriage very nearly never happened. The V8 was originally designed by General Motors in America. But nobody liked its radical aluminium block, and after just three years, GM killed it off. By happy accident, Rover's managing director spotted one lying abandoned in an American boatyard. He bought the rights, and here we are today. It was 1976 when the engine slotted itself into the SD-1. A car full of ingenious technology. Locking petrol cap. Oh, that's important these days. Yes. A machine with flair. A sporting looking car has always been a bird catcher. And a car that was a design classic. In fact, the SD1's designer was so confident of his new creation that when he unveiled it to management, he arranged to have it lined up next to a collection of Italian supercars. But not only was it handsome, it was clever. Take the dashboard, for example. All the dials and stuff are contained in a single sort of box unit that sits on top of the dash. So for right-hand drive versions, they screwed it down on this side, and for left-hand drive, they just screwed it down on the other side. And then they plugged the hole where the steering column would have been with an air vent. And at the end of it, it always had that engine. During its 37-year life, the V8 popped up as a 3.9-litre, a 4-litre, a 4.5 and a 5-litre. But in the SD1, it was a 3.5-litre, with 155 horsepower. Listen to it. It's just a fantastic noise. Simple as that. The police loved the SD1 so much that when they heard it was going out of production in 1986, they stockpiled cars so that they could keep using them after they'd died off. And now, today, the iconic V8 has finally followed its friend through the pearly gates. But don't worry, because the engine and the car live on together at the racetrack. In its day, the SD1 was a fantastic track racer, winning the Touring Car Championships in 1982 and 83. And here today, the old girl gets to relive some of her former glories in classic touring car racing. This is like old rockers on a reunion tour, and it's one of the cheapest motorsports you can do. Do you know how much it costs to run a season? That's the car, tyres, engine, 11 races, the lot. 10 grand. Two of that is the car. And I can't think of a better way to pay tribute. Okay, here we are on the grid. And we're off. All the cars are pre-1982 and essentially the racing is between big stuff that roars down the straights and small hatches that catch them in the corners. There were several SD1s on the track, but none, and here comes the first of the racing excuses, 
were quite as basic as mine, which had standard suspension and standard brakes. It's like driving a shopping car! Besides me, there was one other novice SD1 driver in a white car. So I made beating him my goal for the race. What a manoeuvre! And he's gone away from me! Right, he's in a rover like mine. This must be possible. Maybe he had more talent, but I like to think he had more power. Nothing else for it, I'd have to drive right on my limit. But what a tribute to the big V8. And while others were going off all around me, I at least managed to stay on the track with my comedy suspension. Let's fucking have him through here. Come on! Yeah! Finally, I got past my nemesis, but then, on the next corner, I ran out of talent. And track. Yes! No! No! Cross! Oh, oh, it's it's beautiful! Oh, no, my friend! No! Oh, Connor! And that was that. My tribute to an amazing engine. I'm sorry, it was the best I could do. But thanks anyway for the 37 years of service. Great engine. Yeah. And I must say, I have to say this, a great drive from you. Thank you. Really was. The press were less kind, I must admit. I've got a cutting here. Top Gear presenter struggles at Snap. That is just so unfair! That isn't, you saw all the other cars, they were cornering level, and mine was leaning because I only had ordinary suspension and ordinary brakes, and the engine wasn't as powerful as everyone else's. Do you want me to get you out of this hole? Yes, please. Shall we meet a guest? Yes, please. Okay, 